Ta-da! Welcome to Wayne's World and Kelly. So today we have Richard Johns, who, if you're in the industry, you know who he is. This is the man who makes everything happen in the magazine world. He is the number one publisher of a publication in, in our realm. Would that be a great way to say who you are, Richard? That you are the man? Uh, I believe I believe so, yeah. That that would be close. The man, the myth, the legend, and the guy with the great Tennessee accent. Where are you from originally? Alabama or Tennessee? Uh, originally from a <clears throat> um, have you ever heard of Smyrna, Tennessee? Heck yeah, I went to East Tennessee State University. No, Smyrna, Tennessee. It's close to Nashville. It's about 30 right. minutes southeast of Nashville. I know all things Tennessee because that's where I went to college. Even okay. though it was farther to Nashville than it was to go home in, in good old Manassas, Virginia. But, uh, no, I love Tennessee. And y'all have the best accents in the world, especially the, well, appreciate the women. The guys, eh, y'all are okay. But uh, <laughs> So what are you a big UT fan or what's your school? Yeah, I, I did. I went to school at Tennessee, and uh, so I'm a, I'm a, I'm pretty much a Vol fan. So, you were there probably after me. Oh, go, go Vols! So, um, at East Tennessee State University, on Fridays you'd finish class, and we used to call it East Tennessee Suitcase University, because then ninety percent of the school would go to Na to Knoxville, as they call it. It's not Knoxville, as I thought it was when I was growing up. It's Knoxville, and uh, they'd all they'd all go to their football games, and nobody go to our football games. Yeah. It was unbelievable. I'm like, go yeah. team. It was easy to get seats at our football. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we're glad to so have. Did you go to show. any? Huh? Did you go to any Tennessee? Did you go to any Tennessee games? I think I went to two, and yeah. uh, oh, it's 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 amazing. You know, it's like yeah. going to Virginia Tech game. Um, yeah. I mean, there it's the it's it's amazing. It's hard to believe that you can have that many people in 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 one one stadium. And yeah, holy! So I remember one night screaming in the quad what I thought of UT because I was a little upset about you know our little school on the on the hill compared to them. I'm lucky I survived. <laughs> <laughs> a few of my friends, thanks for saving me, uh, Hal. I think there's a few of us that were down there, and yeah, I was misbehaving. <laughs> but it, it it's it's an incredible town, an incredible school, and obviously they have a lot of great graduates, such as you. So, so when you're not drinking coffee out of your uh, bowls cup, what what do you what do you what do you do? What's what's a day look like in the world of big publishing? Well, a good question. It changes every day. Um, you know, I mean, it, uh, we're on pretty much a schedule, you know, I mean, when you're in the publishing industry, it's, um, <clears throat> we actually publish two magazines. One magazine is, uh, is called cleaner times. That's for the pressure washing industry. And then the Florida community association journal, which is when they're both niche magazines. But, um, today we are preparing for, um, our graphic design guys doing what we call the dummy. And basically, he lays it out. It'd be like Wayne, six sheets of paper. No, not Wayne, not Wayne. No, he's, <laughs> but he really is. He's laying it out on paper, um, and we're preparing for the um, the June issue today. They're putting it on paper today. Um, the layout, the plan, kind of the kind of the blueprint, basically. So um, that's what we're doing this week. The next two weeks, we'll be in what we call uh, production. That's where we're getting all the material in. Um, uh, our graphic designers make drafts. They're, they're, um, we print them out. We have two proofread. Actually, the magazine gets proofread three times um, by different people. Um, goes through a process, and then we send it to the printer up in um, Wisconsin. We don't actually print the magazine here. You know, we have, we contract it out. So, right. And up in Wisconsin, what happens is crazy is they will actually they'll print it around the 15th of the month. The June issue will be printed around the 15th. And then it's struck down to Miami to these distribution centers in pallets, these huge pallets. I've had pictures of it. I don't have them with me, but um, it's pretty wild, the, the process. So anyway, you ship that to Quad Graphics in Wisconsin? No, it's uh, called Royal Printing. They're out of Madison, Wisconsin. 
Yeah, here's to uh, Wisconsin. I grew up there, Eau Claire. Okay. All yeah, right. Madison's a really fun town, tell you that. Yeah. Wow, Badger games, you want to talk about crazy college experiences? <laughs> yeah, I, I'm sure hmm. pretty much Nothing like football heard. season in Wisconsin. <laughs> it's, Come on. It, it, it's really fun. It, it is. It's not, it's not only cool, it's cold. Right, definitely. So <laughs> cool. Real cool. So, <laughs> so, so but, tell uh, us a little bit about 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 your about the Florida magazine. We obviously the target target audience is is community management right. and anybody that's in that realm. How, how long have y'all been in existence? How did you acquire it? Well I'll, I'll I'll give you I guess the full history, I guess real quick. I can summarize it I believe pretty quick. Um the publication, the Florida Journal actually started in Palm basically Palm Beach Island, Palm Beach, West Palm Beach area. And there was a guy by the name of Ivor Thomas. He started the magazine around 1988, started out as like a little eight page newsletter. And um, he was, I may not have all the facts right, but he was basically like a maintenance guy. And then he got his can license. And then, then he saw the need to, a lot of people would ask him questions. So he said, I need to put together a newsletter. So he put together this eight page newsletter around there. He started a, have you heard of Condo Fest? Oh, uh, yeah. Do it every year. Yeah, Love condo, started, April 1st. Yeah, he actually, I think the story is he started Condo Fest um, at his swimming pool. You know, they would, vendors could set up little booths and they would bring food. And so that's how Condo Fest got started, to my knowledge. My facts yeah, are right. It was a real so, splash um, back then. Oh, yeah. hey <laughs> So, um, but around 2000, Roughly around 2000, he was, he was, I think, ready to retire. And so the, their printer came through Little Rock, Arkansas, that's where we're at. And he kind of jokingly said, uh, hey, there's this little magazine down in Florida for sale. Are you interested in buying it? And my mother-in-law at the time said, well, we might be. So they thought about it. And then they ended up buying it around 2000. And it's been in the family ever since. And then uh, my wife and I bought it from my mother-in-law in 2018. So we're kind of tag team and we, we operate the business now. So my understanding, she really thing. runs it, but you're the, you know, you like, you're the glory hog. Is that my wife? Yeah. My wife really is. She's the, yeah, she's the, um, she's the catalyst. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so 45, 45% of all people that live in Florida um, belong to an HOA managed community. So that's a pretty good uh, a number and a pretty good audience for your message. Uh, what are some of the hot button topics out there right now? <laughs> Nothing well, going always, on here. Right. <laughs> well, as you know, it's always insurance. Um, yeah, insurance that's my industry. There. So. There's, yep. there's a million, you know, there's always legal, um, legal topics. Um you know, last year's hurricane has, has really um, had an impact, you know, on the insurance industry. Um, our, I've got a managing editor. Have you heard of Michael Hamline? He's he's on the um, he's our managing editor and he organizes he organizes all the articles, how they flow. And he's the one really the face guy on the streets with talking with the service providers in Florida, get, gathering information. So um, there's always, you know, board educational stuff. Um, there's a, man, the industry's got tons of topics, you know, to talk about. Um, so, can go, you, you know, I don't know if you heard way. about it. In July, we're having Shark Month, where we're going to have that. four different attorneys discussing everything that's going on in Tallahassee. A lot of the articles that you're having printed, we're going to be talking about on the show. So, a lot of changes yeah, going on. A lot for the good, but it's very painful. You know, it's. I think right. at the at a couple of years from now, it's going to be, wow, this is great that that's all happened. Right now, while the sausage is being made, it's brutal. And it's it's a, you know, I'm not a big fan of politicians, but if you see one in the state of Florida, you might want to give them a hug because they are grinding it out, you know, because we don't we don't want another Surfside. Um, right. And it's, we have a unique resident in Florida because we're one of the few places in the country where our residents are, we have, we have our full-time Floridians. But then we have we have our snowbirds or, you know, the people that have these third and fourth properties down in South Florida or in all over Florida to vacation. And so their financial investment thoughts are a little bit different than where they live 
year round. So there's just so much into play. Plus, we have these crazy weather that pounds our coastal buildings and affects the entire state, the intense sun, the intense water. I don't know if you saw in um, Palm Beach Gardens last weekend, we had a tornado hit and really did some major destruction in a small area. Um, two weeks before that, we had the thousand year flood of Fort Lauderdale. You know, all these things have massive impacts on our buildings. And uh, so there's a lot of maintenance that has to happen to these buildings. And and people like, you know, you you want to you want to kick that down the road or you want somebody else to pay for it or be responsible, whatever. But um, your publication, um, hopefully what we're bringing together, also what's going on in Tallahassee and then every every county in the in the state. We are always trying to make it a better, safer place, but it's it's painful. And, and there's a cost to doing it. And I know with you, you have advertising. I know you paid me a big chunk of money today to be on the show. I have a lot. Yeah. No. And we, we actually have a couple different ways. I want you to tell you how people can actually support your publication, because I think it is very important. But also, I want to go first. I'll give you an idea of how we talk about advertising. So like Nouveau Elevator, they gave me a thousand bucks to show their hat today. And then... um. Lurch Bates. No, I guess should be careful. Obviously, these these are just companies that they give me stuff, and I, I know I understand that they give me stuff sometimes because they do want it mentioned on the show. We don't charge anything because it costs us nothing but our time, Wayne's and my time to put this show on. So, like when I keep on talking about rock and wellness, they they support the six year old body, but I actually pay them every month for their product. They don't give me a dime. We had her on the show when she was wonderful, and then of course my company, like all that. So all this advertising times Callaway, my granddaughter's name, so I like to use all the Callaway advertisements, Callaway Golf. So we don't charge anything. The Terminator, go to your local Home Depot and learn about the Terminator. And actually, they just put out a great video. If you go to my LinkedIn, you can see a little, I think it's like a 30-second video about the Terminator. It's fantastic. Some people are happy people. Some people aren't. I would say that Wayne is more of a non-hat person. What do you think? Mm, uh, I, I like the hat. I think the hat <laughs> does him good. There's, we got to find him a better hat model. But um, so so all the way you pay all the bills is through advertising, right? So people can uh, buy sheets, pages, quarter pages, subscriptions, all that good stuff. Right. Right. That's how that generates the revenue that pays the pay that pays the bills. So, but, um, I mean, you know, I mean, that's, um, I mean, we do make, you know, subscriptions in this industry are basically just offset a little bit. You know, we're not making money off subscriptions. That's pretty standard in the magazine industry, you know? Right. So what I would you like to see? What's that? Sure, well, what would you like to see, um, for some new topics out there? <clears throat> like, like Kelly had alluded to, you know, the low hanging fruit is always the legal, it's the political, and it's also the weather. Um, what would you like to see prominently featured maybe a little bit more than than some of those boilerplate topics that that we all are aware of? They are, are all very important in our industry. They pay everybody's bills that is on the show right now. But uh, give me give us some topics that uh, maybe are a little lighter, maybe something that uh, you would like to see talked about a little more. Yeah, I think um, <clears throat> I, we get a, I get a lot of calls here um, at our office from just some are, a lot of a lot of them are residents, you know, yep. and they're wanting information. And you know, we can't field. It's hard. I've tried to. Um, sometimes we will get these people, and they'll they'll ramble for forty five minutes about their board, or their manager, and I'm trying to be nice and you know, um, you know. And it's real hard. I, I, <clears throat> something that I've thought about, and, and I don't know the dynamics. It's kind of like paying college players. I don't know the right way to do it. They should be paid. But how do you do it, you know, make it fair? Right. But I think I think there should be some talk about compensating board members. Um, yeah. I think that, um, and, I, and like I said, I don't know the dynamics. I don't know how it works. Maybe you base it on their budget. Maybe you base it on something, maybe a, a flat fee. I don't know. But in, in this industry that I see, I see um, um, just a lot of people that really possibly don't really want to be on the board. 
<laughs> that are put there in a bad place. Um, you have a lot of people that um, kind of these control guys that are on the board that are calling the shots. Um, they're making it difficult for cams. So, you know, it would be nice to see some think tanks going around. And I'm not saying we pay these people $100,000, $150,000 a year. Just something to incentivize incent the, and give them the incentive to, to serve on the board and serve well. You know, um, I'm going to give so you a counterpoint to that. But here's a counterpoint to that. They have a vested interest in the property because they're all owners. They're, they're owner-occupied buildings. They already have I I because I hear that co that conversation come up a lot. They should be compensated. I think they just need to be transparent. And I think there should be almost like a re-educational camp for anybody that's going to be living in a condo. Understand that that person you're insulting or being rude to that's volunteering their time. Yeah. They're your neighbor. Be more human. It it yeah. we see we all see it a lot. And it definitely, it's like the third rail, you know, you can't, it's sometimes it's a, quite often, it's the elephant in the room that people don't want to talk about. Man, that's a freaking yeah, elephant yeah. in the room. I think we should mention it because at some point we have to clean it up. Yeah. We really do. I think we just need to make people more aware in your publication, our our little podcast can help people understand that everyone's human and they're, these people are volunteering. Some people have dastardly, desires to be on the board because they are a control freak. They think they can get something for nothing. They can keep things from happening. They can make things happen. That's to their, to their desire. It's a communal living. I mean, actually um, one of our, our sharks that's going to be on the show in July for the, for shark month um, has, has a, uh, what's it called condo craze. Yeah. Eric Glazer. Yeah. Yeah. So Eric is Eric and I were at the trade show in Tampa last week. And, and and this these it's two board members come up and they're asking him questions about stuff. They lived in a four unit condo, and they're tying up Eric's time while other people want to ask Eric really reasonable questions. I'm sitting there like going, hopefully they don't watch the show, but I'll tell you, come on, people, it's four, three of you get along, and one of you don't figure it out. Why are you bothering Eric? about something so insignificant there's really important yeah. issues that have to be taken care of at these condos and it's painful you know some people go well we have people that live here that can't afford i'm sorry i, I had somebody make a great suggestion we, we should do it as a theme wayne R reverse mortgages which i'm not technically a big fan of overall but for people that are financially um, you know, not making a lot of money because they're retired and they bought into these condos, you know, 40 years ago where the prices was this much and now they're this much because of, of, of the land values. They can do a reverse mortgage, borrow up to 40 percent and live there and not have to leave this their home. You know, there are solutions out there to make things better. But one solution isn't is by people being terrible on the board. Or people being terrible to the people that are serving on the board, but yeah. I don't think you. I don't think paying them helps. I, well, I thought about maybe. Um, I don't think you should be compensated for it. I think that would be one because holy cow, I think that would open up more oh. worms than the actual. So that's my little pitch yeah. on that. Yeah. yeah, that's why I said I don't know how you would work it out, but there's some kind of right. incentive to get them to. Um, who want to serve faithfully on the board. And you know, I think a lot of those people don't realize that it's a, investing in their building is it's investing in, you know, if you, if you increase the value of your building, then your unit is worth more money when it comes time to sell. So if you look right. at it as more like an investment, you know, um, but if you stay in there, then your taxes go up. Yeah, true. It's a double-edged sword. I'm sorry. That's, you know, yeah. No, but, so no, I don't I, care, but I don't care. I mean, the, the most important thing is to make your building as safe. as safe as possible and aesthetically pleasing as well. I'm, 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 if it's affordable, but safety first, always safety right. first. We will have people say, well, before, before if we're going to be asking, and you're not asking your, your residents for money, you're saying, hey, this is what we have to do. But they go, if we're asking our residents for an assessment, then we have to beautify the lobby. Yeah, I don't think that, you know, 
the lobby is on the first floor, but it's really not holding up the building. You know, really? we have to worry about the structure. We have to worry about the roof. The roof is extremely important because everything else is below it. But we replace roofs after we make sure that the building's solid because we're, we don't want to destroy the roof and put the thing together. This is a great thing to yeah. talk about with a magazine owner. But because you are a huge um, um, distribution of information. And so right. I think <clears> you, <throat> so if somebody wants to write an article, they can just write the article for no compensation and send it to you. And if you approve it, you'll publish it, correct? In some cases, yes. There's, there's, there. I mean, we have to be careful what we publish. Sure. I mean, it goes. Well, that's why I said you have to approve it. But, but if there's right. people out there that you know, Wayne asked a great question: What kind of topics do you want to see? Well, what, what kind of topics do our listeners want to see in your magazine? And you know what? Write one, submit it, and you know, if and if, if Richard and the team approve it, you might become famous. But more importantly, you could get that information out as opposed to just posting on your Facebook. You know, right. I'll, I'll right. tell you the thing that uh, that 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 I would really like to see. I mean, I'm on a board myself and I've seen the good and the bad. And the bad that I have seen has been consistent throughout the years. And it really comes down to this. You get a lot of people that have been a big hit in the private sector. And then they come on the board and they bring their ego and they think just because I was an executive at Cargill, I know everything what to do, follow me. The common person that has been on the board, the one that hasn't had that ego trip that they had for 20, 30, 40 years, they're usually the ones that are the successful ones in pushing needed reform and agendas and projects forward. The big yeah. ego folks I have seen all the time fail because they can't get out of their own way. And it's really, really needs to be addressed. I understand management companies do board civility training. I get all that. But to me, that is equally as important as what Kelly was talking about as far as making sure structures are safe. Because unless you have good board dynamics, you're not doing anything at all. Right. Yeah. And it's, 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 and it's a shame. And, and, and it, there, there are easy solutions. I you know I always say the easy solution is to hire an owner's rep for any major project that you have going on, but you know, and it doesn't have to be us, but sometimes I, 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 so my, my business partner, James LaGreca, he's got a master's in architecture. He's been a GC for a hundred years. He grew up in construction with his dad. Um, but he also has a, a degree in psychology as his undergrad and, his, and he has a master's in architecture. And he used to kind of get up, you know, he didn't like it when I first used to say years ago, you know, James has a degree in psychology, and that's a huge part of what we do as owners' reps. I, I think almost everybody should get a psychology degree if they're going to live in a condo. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it is shocking. And, I, and in post COVID, I think people seem to be a little bit nastier, and 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 I don't I don't know why. Um, I, I I would think that we would we should be a little bit more happy to see people. Post COVID, now in Florida we didn't participate like the rest of the country um, because we had a very short time where we were sequestered. But you know, being nice isn't that tough. I'm a, I'm, I'm not I'm not a nice guy by nature. I'm the no, youngest of nine. I got beat up and sat on and all kinds well of deserved. silly things happened to me. <laughs> you know, up until I was bigger than most of my family. Remember, it took a long. Was, was, I took a beating for decades before that happened. So I understand how to get along and try to, you know, I, I kind of grew up in a condo <laughs> with eight brothers and sisters and mom and dad, Charlie Brown, the dog. Right. So maybe maybe I have a little more sense of it. But people, honest to God, all kidding aside, they just not, they need to be nicer and understand that these people are volunteering. I see these little 20 unit condos where people were. Several people are taking care of everybody else, and there's zero appreciation. I know a property yeah. where they put in a new um, – and maybe this could be a good article. <laughs> they, they put in a new washer and dryer, and so – and they upped the price of the coin-controlled laundry by like a quarter. 
And and people are up and going, oh, what are they doing with the extra money? <laughs> it's like, are oh you my kidding God. me? And it, Talk about you know, majoring in minor things. Wow. <laughs> I like that's a great line. Yeah, so oh. it's, it's it's interesting, but you know, you know, with with your magazine, I think it does a great job of of educating people and 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 maybe you know, and and, and it can only get better. Uh, magazines yeah. aren't on the rise, but they're definitely uh, yours is a, is a must read. Like remember we when uh, remember when they used to have must see TV, and uh, and most most of we don't need to see it anymore, but. Your magazine definitely is a huge conduit to our to our community. Um, you I are appreciate it. BRs are very important to us in the state. Our, our legislators are very important, but also our neighbors are very important. So let's treat them that way. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think coming across as the nice guy, I'm supposed to be the funny guy, but you know, and maybe start off with a nice little joke and not a mean one. Be nice to people. Yeah. That's gonna be that's gonna be our topic for the entire month of of May. Be nice. Be nice. I like that. <laughs> like, I'm sure you're you're nice to your wife. That's also very important. Well, I have a choice, Kelly. <laughs> to be there, there's times when you're asleep and she's not, so you better be nice to her. <laughs> no, I've got a GM. I, I hit a home run with her. I got lucky. You know, I, I, you know I, I I've met your wife, and I still don't understand how you pulled that off. I <laughs> uh, I don't either. Uh, you know this. Um, <laughs> Some people are blessed, you know. Yeah. Well, he, sometimes so. it's a big trend. Like I, when Wayne married his lovely bride, she married him because he had a great head of hair. What happened? That's what she said. Well, I can fix it. I can fix it. There you go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Much better. Well, time flies. Mm. I know everybody's got a busy day. We appreciate you coming on. Everybody, if you don't subscribe, you should subscribe. Um, we'll have a link on there, um, for advertisers that want to, unlike us where we don't get paid <laughs> really good value for the dollar, right? <clears throat> you know, people, people yes. get a good bang for their buck for their magazine. So, uh, um, other places don't endorse, we endorse, we endorse your magazine. 100%. You're, yeah, you're, well, I appreciate it some... you know, and it's, you, know, you, you could be doing a lot of other things. We do really appreciate, you know, your mother-in-law, your wife, you, your team carrying on the burden because, you know, if you guys went away, you know, it, it, it would definitely be an impact on 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 what we do in, and we appreciate what you guys do in every single yeah. week. So, well, I appreciate the kind words. So. Yeah, I appreciate you, Richard. Thank you for coming on the show. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. And remember, what day. what's July? Short month. Short month. <laughs> so, uh, who are the attorneys you're having? Uh, we're, we can't announce them all yet. I got to. We got to close them all down before we announce oh, them. But, come uh, on, Kelly, give me a hand. Do I know? Well, I, I mean, we already mentioned Eric, so I don't want to. You know, that's kind of a given. But no, I. Um, sure. Here's the problem. I've got. You know, they're circling. You know, how imagine that. circle. <laughs> imagine, imagine that. And we only can have four because there's only four Wednesdays in the month of July. So we can only Open have for four. Bid. What's that? Open it up for bid. Open it up for bid. We know, and, and we and, and bring in some of that fake money that we bring in every week. <laughs> I can see. Then give it to a, and then give it to a charitable um, um, organization. Ah oh, man, that's a nice idea. But you know what? The, the the difficulty of doing something like that. You know, we this is. I like to make it clean and easy. But I'm very excited for Shark Week. But I, I like the way you think. And maybe for Shark Week 2024, we will do that. But I'm not putting anything. I've got I've got too much stuff going on to sit there and try to figure that one out. But we will say that any attorney in this in this state, in a perfect, wonderful state of Florida, whether they're on the show or not, we want them to make a donation to their favorite charity. There you uh, go. And also one more thing. So if you do want to have a healthy start to every morning with rock and wellness, you can go to rock and wellness.com. And right now, and I, this is gonna be the last week you can get a 15% discount by putting in, um, what is it? It's like W W A K or N K or something. It, it's, it's, it'll be posted on the site. So, but I, I pay full price. I don't put in the discount price because I've been doing it for probably close to 12 years. and I love it. So one of our favorite 
non-paying sponsors, Rock and Wellness. And what's the name of your magazine? Florida Community Association Journal. Love it. <laughs> okay, Thank guys. You. Have a wonderful week. We definitely appreciate you, brother. All right. Thanks, Kelly. Thanks, Wayne. Appreciate it. Thanks, Richard. Adios, gentlemen.